Welcome everyone, Quistine here with the discussion about Queek, head taker of the Skaven, who actually is one of the more powerful legendary lords of the entire Skaven. In fact, I would dare say that while he certainly doesn't have the same kind of faction effects and power that someone like Ikeklaw and Frat does have, well, let's just say that you end up in a situation where if you're playing the campaign as Queek, you realize that the power that you do have in this campaign is fairly significant in terms of the early game. The way Warhammer Free does end up working, the way the campaign is structured, the way uh, you are rewarded for playing the game is by pursuing aggression. So generally speaking, the best legendary lords in the game and the best races in the game are those that can be fairly aggressive in terms of their campaign plans. This is exactly what Queek ends up doing very, very effectively in his campaign. Because let's consider his starting position. Ignoring the faction effects, it, it didn't doesn't really matter what kind of faction effects he has. It's like we have to consider his starting position. He starts with the Misty Mountain. He can take the Salamant on turn one. He can take the entirety of Blightwater by turn the end of turn two. And starting with a minor Salamant as Skaven is actually a huge benefit when you have a province that you can take very quickly because then you can turn the provincial capital into a tier 3 settlement by the time you arrive it. This is one of the benefits that uh, that Snitch does actually possess during his campaign, that he can do this, precisely this, during the course of his campaign very effectively. And this is also a benefit that Queek can also do in his campaign because he's takes Karak as Gaal very quickly. In fact, I might have wanted to start a rebellion there. I could have done so um, if I had taken certain action. Like if I had taken the first element, moved the army outside so I didn't have a public order benefit by having a an army, I would have gotten a rebellion right now. So I'm gonna have to wait to turn. Then you take the Crook Fang Fort and then you march on Karak Azul. You de deal with, um, and then you deal with Karak Eight Peaks. And you can do so within the first few turns of a of a campaign and it's not even funny the sheer amount of power that Queek does end up having during the course of his campaign it's not even hilarious like this guy is absurd the reason he's absurd as stated is like you just have that significant amount of benefits in your campaign and skaven like understand this queek is a baseline legendary lord of the skaven you don't need to own any dlc everything that i'm doing here the chieftains the night runners all of this kind of stuff is something you can do by default in his campaign without any kind of real issues um during the course of that campaign you can achieve all of this with no DLC whatsoever. So, surprisingly, actually, Queek is one of the best baseline legendary lords to actually play in the entire game. You have a huge amount of power, you have good a good ca uh, faction dynamic, you have a good race. What makes the Skaven so really powerful is that they have really powerful early game units that are available to them, and being able to dominate your enemies in the early game is what sets apart certain factions from others. It's what makes... Um, in certain races apart from others. This is one of the reasons why I keep br bringing up the fact like Dark Elves and Greenskins are some of the best races in the game. Chaos Dwarves work a bit differently even though they're a top tier race, but for the most part, with the exception like Chaos Dwarves and Wood Elves, uh, for the most part, and even in those cases, you still have races that do end up thriving on aggression. It's like, like the Wood Elves, oh, you just want to play passively. No, you don't play passively at all if you're playing a Wood Elf campaign. You play extremely aggressively and you win for the sake of that early game aggression, generating a huge amount of power. Like over here, I have got five freaking heroes in this campaign already very early on. And this does have to do with some of the benefits that Queek does have in the course of his campaign that other Skaven just don't have in the same way that he does. So you end up, again, as stated, you end up with a very, very good legendary lord with a huge level of power during the course of his campaign. Like, over here, I've got a good amount of money, I've got the rank 6 lord, and this is just baseline. Furthermore, the fact that his special skill line is actually available very early on is actually quite a benefit. He does have some issues with loyalty because he doesn't trust a lot of people. Like if we look over here, he does have minus one loyalty for new recruits, but you can get plus two loyalty for 
um, for warlord recruits, though he does suffer in terms of loyalty for gracier recruits. Yeah, he doesn't really like the graciers. Um, but you do have that huge hero capacity early on. And quite very important, I would argue, as well, in a campaign over here. It's more than just that. It's also the fact that during the course of this particular campaign, you have a fairly safe campaign situation as well. You might think starting next to Scarbrand would be a pretty questionable situation, but in reality, Scarbrand kind of likes you like scarbrand like skaven and demons getting along eh, maybe that's not necessarily the biggest surprise of the world yes, yes. but they absolutely do get along quite well and you might want to plan your campaign ahead like over here if this army attacks me no problem <laughs> whatsoever in fact as i said like you might want to get another army you might want to engage in certain level of diplomacy and nonsense with respect to diplomacy in order to get the result that you do want huge amount of power huge amount of potential over here maybe a bit slower in terms of recruiting a second army but really once you start taking the war to Karakazul and Karaka peaks you'll be rolling in the cash without really anything uh, to spend it on and while you do have people like Forek and Kalida that can become an issue, maybe even Warzag that can become an issue, let alone the dwarves who despise you. Like a lot of people do despise the Skaven. You've got Scarbrand as an ally. And while Scarbrand under AI control is not necessarily the hype that he people portray him as, it's still fucking Scarbrand. <laughs> it's simple as that. Like Scarbrand is Scarbrand. Oh, by, by the way, help Scarbrand out. Deal with Malagor. Uh, yeah, Greenskin's attacking this army, even if it's Forms Manager's Art. It's not, not going to really stand the chance. Using some other resolve mods just for demonstration purposes. In terms of faction effects, you get the plus two hero capacity for chieftains, minus 25% upkeep for storm vermin and clan rats. Yes, he's better with storm vermin and clan rats than freaking um, <laughs> than Tretches. Fun thing, like Tretch is supposed to be this clan rat lord, but in reality, Queek ends up being the clan rat lord. He reduces leadership for enemy lords and embedded heroes. He gets a huge amount of melee attack and weapon strength against dwarves and greenskins, which you are surrounded by. I might add, and he has a huge amount of uh, benefits in his campaign that do really help him out. Some things you may not necessarily want to take, for instance, getting uh, make examples may not necessarily feel that great because, yeah, losing that loyalty of Gracie or recruits is not necessarily going to be beneficial, but you do have benefits like casualty replenishment for your entire army, uh, recruit extra recruit rank for Storm Vermin Indians, recruitment duration minus. A one turn for storm vermin Indians, all provinces. So you can actually, you are the storm vermin legendary lord. It's pretty freaking hilarious. Like, you, like, Quick was designed to be the storm vermin legendary lord. That's not even a question, really. Um, so he actually does end up having a good amount of benefits with respect to storm vermin. And while, um, while Tretch does have his own fair share of benefits with respect to that, you kind of end up overtaking him as well uh, in from that particular perspective you end up with two provinces that can give you a good amount of uh, you can end up with two settlements yes. both of them at tier three within the very first few turns of your campaign that is a huge level of power that very few uh, very few campaigns generally have and because of because of that kind of starting position as the Skaven, because of that kind of power dynamic that you have in play over here, you actually end up being really, really powerful. And you also have clan Verms that you can make friends with over here as you declare war on Karakazul. You might decide to ignore that and focus on some other things, though I would personally argue that going marching for Karakate Peaks as quickly as possible is not necessarily the best decision in the world. It does take a decent enough army to succeed in that respect. Although you could wait for Karakazul to defeat Clan Verms or destroy their armies and then uh, abuse Confederation, then deal with Karakazul once you've taken their territory. Although you can also wait for Confederation in other ways. And once you do take Karakate Peaks, you will end up in a very, very, very strong campaign position that very that only a handful of other legendary lords do have access to. The one thing that might actually slow you down during the course of your campaign is you might overdo it a bit with heroes and push your economy too far there. But consider this campaign plan. You deal with Karakazul. Okay, 
Who's going to attack you? Drazov, Tretch? <laughs> what a joke. Emmerich might, might do so. Sure. You can attack Emmerich, defeat him, give him ter his territory to Drazov, and suddenly your entire eastern freaking flank is secure right there. Think, think on that. As for the west and the south, Scarbrand holds that. So your southern flank is secure. Until Fork beats Scarbrand, which I've seen happen many times on this difficulty. But your, your southern flank is... Uh, relatively secure, right? Um, yes, for a while, for at least the early game. And that early game security is actually what makes Quick so really, really good. It's like, it's the ability of expanding across a good amount of territory without consideration for any issues. For Christ's sake, you can get the artillery within the first few turns of the game without any issues. And honestly, I could have built that artillery shop over here in Karakas Gaul. That is, that is a huge insane level of power that again very very few legendary lords have that kind of security in a campaign and you t you go on karakay peaks you sack karakay peaks right you sack karakay peaks it starts as a tier free settlement you'll be gaining a lot of money from from that uh just in itself who's going to stop you no one because no one can stop you like no legendary lord around quick is capable of putting up a serious fight against him. Now, even Scarbrand, like, if you wanted to beat... Uh, let me just put it like this. If Quick want, if you're playing Quick and you want to wipe out Scarbrand, he can't stop you. Like, I'm not even joking on it. I'm not trying to make stir shit up for the sake of it. But it's like, you've got more armies. You've got more troops. You've got the bigger economy. You get rebellions to your, that feed your economy. So over here, for instance, I might get the rebellion over here. It's not really a downside to get the rebellion in a campaign. You get a rebellion, you start feeding your economy for rebellions to take. Uh, oh, the uh, the mutinous kids are marching on me. Ooh, what shall they do? Should I march my main army against them? Should I not? Like, it's those kind of things. And you put an ambush, right? You just move an army right th like this, and AI will just literally walk into that ambush. For instance, over here in this campaign is absurd what you do have available over here in this campaign in terms of potential maybe not the most amount of money that you can have in a campaign early on though it's certainly decent the reason it's not quite the most amount of money it's simply because there's um there's certain um there there's not enough diplomatic agreements that you can make as some other factions can but like look at this like they're just gonna march right there in the ambush they're gonna be destroyed I don't have to worry about Karakazul because Kazador is going to end up dead anyway. And while I may have a rebellion that's going to be an issue in the Eastern Battlelands, it's not really too much of a problem, right? Over there. Can't take RK Peaks, deal with Karakazul, then deal with Emmerich, secure your entire Eastern Frontier, as I said. Give it to Drazov. He's secured. No one's going to march against you. No problem. And then, what? Warzak? <laughs> Warzak is not going to stop you. Like, genuinely... You can hard counter Warzak's entire army. Because Night Runners are quite capable of doing something like that. Oh, they didn't quite march into the ambush there. No problem. No problem. So it's like just a bunch of greenskins trying to march in that. It's like they're not going to stop you. They can't stop you. And then it's like you start getting the money rolling. You start uh, doing f these kind of things in your campaign. It's like who is going to stop you? No one. I <laughs> I have to say this very, very clearly. It's like many people can try and stop you and many people will f end up flailing on the ground against you as a scheme. Like, it's just, it's not necessarily the case that Queek's benefits are so incredible that they make his campaign great. Though he is a really powerful duelist. He's not quite Snitch's level. Then again, Snitch is like a paid DLC lore that was designed to be bullshit. He's not quite there, but I do have to rem I do have to say that out of the baseline legendary lords of Warhammer 2, you had Tyrion was an incredible uh, duelist in as a legendary lord, and then you had Queek. Malekith was more of a hybrid lord, and he, it's more about the faction effects with his skill line than anything else. Though, uh, though Tyrion certainly does have those as well. Let's not deny that aspect. So, huge amount of power, huge amount of potential, just because of the campaign situation. Oh, Clan Worms is going to be wiped out by Karakazul. Whatever shall I do? Maybe I'll just confederate a bunch of Skaven territories, which will give me even more power. And 
you know, you can even make deals with Warzak. You can be good friends with Warzak. You don't have to end up necessarily fighting him. So you end up in this fairly secure, safe campaign position, which is... And this is the reason I, I consider Quick more highly in a lot of ways than Skrull, Frot, and Ikeclaw. Don't get me wrong. Like, from an objective standpoint, faction effects, nuclear weapons that... Um, Ekeclaw does have our cell nuclear weapons, right? There's a huge amount of power. But you look at Ekeclaw's campaign situation. He, he only has, like, two factions that he might be somewhat friendly with. And I emphasize the somewhat friendly aspect of that uh, that statement. Um, you, you have only two factions that you're somewhat friendly with, and that's, like, Sartos and Scrag. Whereas if you play Quick, like you've got Scarbrand, you've got Clan Verms, and you're not constantly fighting against a lot of factions for what territory. That's not the dynamic that Quick has in play in his campaign. So honestly, you might as well have no faction effects whatsoever. It still wouldn't really matter as much as it does for. Um, it still wouldn't really matter just because of the strength of the campaign position. You might ask, well, what, doesn't that mean Tretch is a good legendary lord? Kind of. The Dark Lands means, you know, you have to deal with Grimgore in a campaign. You have to deal with Skarsnik. These are easy campaigns. These are easy foes, necessarily. Like, Skarsnik is easy. Forgrim, Skarsnik, all that. But if you look at Tretch's campaign, wherever he expands, he's meeting more foes, right? It'd be at Emre, Grim, Grimgore... Um, for Grim, Skarsnik, etc. Regardless of where he expands, he's going to meet major factions that are going to be foes. Queek has a lot of expansion room. North, south, west, east. Where he's going to be relatively safe in this campaign situation. Yes, Kalida will eventually win the war in south, since she might be an issue. Though Tomb Kings are not necessarily your foes. Unless you make them so. One thing worth remembering about that entire situation. So... Great amount of power, great amount of action potential. And what you end up doing in the long term? Well, it's like that's really your choice. Like, what's your objective? Like, just defeat Belagar, right? Ultimately. In this particular campaign. So it's hard to screw this campaign up. And that's really an important bit, uh, as I would argue here. And if a cam campaign is hard to screw up, regardless of how you play then that just makes that campaign a lot uh, safer and smoother and just flat out better in a lot of ways to handle than it might be otherwise. And that's a real benefit in Quick's campaign. Like, it's a straightforward campaign. You go, you deal with uh, Gorfang. <laughs> Poor Gorfang. He's just a meme at this point. Do you know this guy was, was the true master of the... Of the Badlands in the lore? Yeah, not so much in the game, what can I say? He's been a joke since Warhammer 1. But you have a fairly straightforward path, you have the army to defeat it. It might slow you down a bit, you know, dwarves showing up with entire troops, but you do have night runners, you do have gun runners uh, that you can get. You can get artillery relatively early on, you can get a huge pack of heroes that will devastate the dwarves each on their own. And you have one of the best hero and lord killers in the entire game in Quick. Not quite on the level of Snitch, but, like, there's a reason Snitch is the best. Quick, from my point of view, is the second best Legendary Lord of this game. And that's where I stand on that subject. Quasi and Sanyat. 